Welcome in, guys. Huge weekend. Only one loser on the weekend, and that was a game we bet off of due to injury, but coming off a 3-0 sweep yesterday. Pelicans, the Sixers, and blanket on that third team right there. John Pelicans, Sixers, and the Hornets yesterday. Uh, then on Saturday, it was just the Hornets. And on Friday, we had the Bucks with a push. Uh, then we get the Knicks and the Magic game. That one we bet off of. We had the Magic originally, as you guys know, we left you off with. Brunson in, Suggs out, able to bet off at the same price. Either way, John, a lot of winners over the weekend. Finally heating things up here. Yeah, great weekend. Um, Hornets treated us right both Saturday and yesterday. And these, these are the teams you find the value in, the, the teams that are that nobody wants. Philadelphia yesterday, nobody wants them. No Embiid, no Maxi. But there's when there's value there, that's when we'll jump on them. And I don't know if anybody saw that game. My, my, I almost went blind uh, <laughs> watching that that game. Brick um, City took, took my vision to a, like I think 60 60 now instead of 2020. <laughs> a brutal game uh, defensively. I think that's the first time in eight years neither team has reached 80 points. Um, but again, this is why there's value. We we see a, it should be a low scoring game. If you guys have followers for a while, you've heard me talk how seven, 10 points spread is worth so much more in a game that's going to have a low total, uh, you know, 210 or so, as opposed to a game that's got a 240 total. Mm -hmm. So they, those these points are worth the value. Uh, 76ers get us done outright. Um, Charlotte Hornets, they get the job done for us also. And, um, uh, Pelicans was the only favorite. Uh, they jumped up real big and ran away with that one. So you you can really feel it heating up a great weekend. Like Ben said, the one loser it was only because we bet both ways on the same game. So if you throw that away, yeah, it's, a, it's a strong weekend. And we're going to finish this way. Got to finish this way right through the end of the season, right into the NBA playoffs. And, uh, again, go to the site, guys. Now's the time to become a member. If you join now, um, you'll pay $199. And you'll be grandfathered in. Once baseball season starts, price goes back to $2.99. With that being said, Ben, we got a little basketball card tonight, so let's get started. And I'll tell you guys ahead of time, I don't love anything just yet. Uh, we'll talk about the injuries and what to expect later. By the way, you guys saw all the comments on Friday. Appreciate you guys. Please keep that up. Like, comment, subscribe below. See some of you guys want us back five days a week. We might make that happen once baseball comes around. You guys just got to hold up your end of the bargain. And, uh, yeah, make sure you take advantage of that promo. Ten days away now until first pitch in Korea between the Dodgers and the Padres. And baseball season is just right there. Solid card today. Top game, though, is a tough one, John. Hornets at the Pistons. A couple of your bottom four teams here in the NBA. Technically, you can argue Charlotte has a reason to lose this game as far as, you know, the lottery is the worst three teams. They're the fourth team looking in on the bottom three. So, uh, technically, it favored them to lose this game. And they are coming off a nice win against uh, the Nets. The Hornets keep on getting it done right now, playing good ball. They're covering not as much on the road. And then you have this Pistons team who absolutely blown out by Dallas. I mean, they're just the latest victim to this run that Luka Doncic is on, which is just absolutely ridiculous at this point. Uh, as far as you know, the matchup history, a little bit favors to Detroit. Might lean on this games a little bit to Detroit. Maybe a little bit of a letdown there for Charlotte after a win. They don't win two games in a row very often. Uh, Cam Pistons get this one done. This is a game I'm going to be looking to get at halftime. You have Hornets with the lead. I wouldn't mind coming back around with Detroit. And uh, Pistons are blowing them out here in the first half. Wouldn't mind getting a better number in this game. Two of your uh, worst teams here. Tough to want to get action on this. Yeah, two of your worst teams. Uh, Charlotte. Sorry, Ben, I lost you there for a second. No worries. Yeah, uh, two of your worst teams in the NBA going at it tonight. Charlotte, uh, third and fourth, they got us the W against Brooklyn. Um, Pistons at home, um, get buried by the Mavs. Just I've got no interest in this game. This this is what we call race to the bottom with these guys. Uh, I think the line's right where it should be. So I'm staying off this one unless there's something major happens. Uh, during the course of the day. Sorry about that, guys. And we got Suns at Cleveland. A lot of injuries been around these two yeah. teams lately. Devin Booker, he is expected to return today. We'll see if he's on any kind of a minutes restriction. Eric Gordon remains out. 
And then for Cleveland, you have Mitchell and Mobley. They're both going to remain out, waiting to see what's going on with Dean Wade and Max Struess. But uh, those role players really mean a lot, especially at those positions already with those injuries to Mitchell and Mobley. So could have an extremely shorthanded Cavs team. Phoenix getting a bit healthier. As far as the matchup history, Cleveland, they won both meetings last year. Uh, they won at home, but Phoenix covered that matchup. Suns, they had won the prior five meetings. Obviously, Cleveland, they took a step forward last year from their lottery days. Uh, this is a Suns team who's been playing a bit better basketball. They are coming off a tough loss there to Boston, uh, but they've been playing shorthanded. What do you expect them? It's a lean here to the Suns. I'm not looking to lay a big number on the road. Uh, but at the end of the day, this Cavs team pretty shorthanded. That seems to be getting worse and worse. And as the season goes on and on, it's going to be tougher and tougher. They're coming off a pretty tough loss to the Nets at home. And they're going to be back to back from that. Uh, Nets, who were going into that game, I believe it was 3 and 16 against the Red last 19 road games uh, to blow out Cavs on the road. I mean, this Phoenix team obviously much improved to that team. So uh, lean here, Phoenix or nobody, but staying away. Yeah, I got to see how this one comes back. Yeah, we got Booker now coming back after missing the last four games. Um, Phoenix just not going to get it done. Even with this trio, they, they look like they, they they played a little bit better ball, but they're not in that top echelons. Let's see what Booker brings to them. Um, Cleveland, now this team has been playing uh, banged up all year long. Remember at the early part of the year, it was Garland and Mobley that missed the beginning part of the season. So right now it's Mitchell and, and Mobley. Uh, Mitchell now, um, I think it's six games. He's missed the last six games. Mm -hmm. Different different team with him out of there. Obviously, he's their leading scorer. But Cleveland is used to playing shorthanded. And they had a nice little run back uh, when Garland and Mobley were out. Now, they are back-to-back, -back, which makes being shorthanded even that much the worst. only thing I can say is Okoro played 30 minutes. He led the team in minutes. So nobody played more than 30 minutes last night. There's no travel. They played in Cleveland. Um, let's see who's playing out of shift. Both Struess and Wade are in. They, that, taking a half a dozen or so at home in what, again, what should be a low-scoring game could be a little more attractive to me. But I would have to absolutely have those two guys back in to even give uh, Cavs a look in this one. Then we have Mavs going on to Chicago. Told you guys what Luka's been doing. Now five straight triple-doubles with 35 or more points. The NBA record, six straight triple-doubles with 30 points or more. Uh, and then if you go back one more game, his last seven, averaging over 37 points, 10.7 rebounds, and almost 12 assists. He's just playing phenomenal basketball. It's a run uh, that we haven't seen since Russell Westbrook, and he's doing it in grander fashion. You have this Bulls team playing pretty good ball, 3-1 and one their last four. They had a big lead at the back end of their trip at the Clippers. Couldn't hold on to that big lead. End up losing by 10, blow the cover. Uh, matchup history is all Bulls here. Mavs got him earlier this season, but Bulls and won and covered last four in Chicago. And that's where I'm looking at this one. Lean here to the Bulls. Uh, you have a tough stretch here coming up for Dallas after this. They go home to Golden State. Then they get OKC in Denver. So uh, playing good ball. Might be looking onto that little three-game set of Western Conference opponents. This would be Chicago or nobody for me with the ownership. I've been playing pretty solid ball. I see the, the the reason to look at Chicago. They've they've owned this matchup in Chicago. This is a tough little spot for them. They're returning home from that West Coast trip, so it's fourth and six, and you can see they tired in the second half uh, in that Clipper game. Dallas, this Doncic is just out of his mind. Luca, mm -hmm. I, I mean now again he's got to be in that MVP, and I mean at the top of that MVP conversation, I've been saying it for a while. Jokic, Luca, uh, SGA. Anyway, uh, Dallas second best against the spread road record in the NBA. Um, tough to go against them. I think the number is right there. So to me, unless there's an injury or this line moves big off the four, I'll be staying off this one also. We'll say we have had some uh, under trending games in the NBA lately. Dallas being the one team who is not trending under recently, still putting up a shitload of points, still giving up a shitload of points. Could be a lean a little bit there to the over as well. Well, uh, the yeah. only thing I'll say about that, Ben, is tonight you got uh, Jenna Schroeder uh, refing when she's on the court. Under is 22 and 10. Uh, that's another thing, guys. I, I, not many, not many. None of these guys that pretend to be handicappers tell you we go into ref stats. I mean, this is this is the depth that we go. We have, when, when we have ref stats 
that are over 60 percent. In other words, like I see some guys out there and they'll say 57 point 57 is nothing margin of error. Uh, you know, especially these, the guys are talking about in the NFL over eight games, 57 percent, 57 percent is five and three. What are we looking at here? Or so that'd be right. actually a little higher. But uh, let's call it five and four. That's 57 percent, 60 percent or more. Uh, that that that's a trend. So okay, he says uh, tonight, Janice Schroeder, one of the uh, most under referees at twenty two and ten. So be careful on that total bet. And we got Warriors at San Antonio, the second game of a two game set. They're home and home here. You had uh, Spurs in Golden State on Saturday, blew them out one twenty six one thirteen. No Wemby in that game. No Steph Curry in that game. Wemby, he's coming back. Curry, he's going to remain out. Uh, Spurs, they've just been shooting the ball well. They wanted that nice little set there. They should have really gone swept in the Bay Area. They had that big lead on Sacramento, let it slip late. Uh, but they shot 50% from deep in this last game. Can they come back around and get it in this matchup? They're 2-5 and five straight up, but 5-2 and two against the spread the last seven meetings. Warriors without Curry have been abysmal this season. They've lost all four. What are they, 1-3 and three straight up in those games? Uh, this is a tough ask for Golden State to go on the road and get a win. But the spot is there. We talk about these home-and-home home sets. It's an immediate home revenge. This is one of the worst teams in the NBA, so shouldn't be too difficult. Does Wemby uh, usage kind of look off here in his first game back? Does he need to get rhythm back? So uh, weird game all around. Spot is all Golden State. Could only look at them. Hard to lay points with this team without Steph Curry. So a lot, lot to, lot to uh, unravel in this one. First, let's talk about does San Antonio even want to win any more games? So if you want to be one of the teams with the three, one of the three teams with the worst record, all of a sudden San Antonio getting dangerously close. They're lucky Charlotte won the other day. So Charlotte now 16 wins, San Antonio with 14. We're going to take for granted uh, Detroit at 10 wins, Washington at 11 are going to be the one and two. So let's see where San Antonio and Charlotte, both teams play tonight into that mix. Now, if they do want to win, and, and look, they've been playing real good basketball mm-hmm. since the All-Star break. Real, They've made real progress. They've actually played really good without Wemby on the court the last two games. Uh-huh. Gave Sacramento all they could handle, and then go beat the Warriors, albeit without Steph. And that's the only reason that I have not went out and laid uh, Warriors today, as Ben's telling you, these home and homes, especially when you're a big favorite, getting upset on your home court, should come back uh, four games so far this year without Steph Curry, four L's, one and three against the spread, tough to lay Golden State, but to me it's Golden State or nobody in this game. Um, San Antonio will also get Vassal back. He missed the last game, so they went and got that done at Golden State without Vassal and Wembenyama. So we'll see. It's 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 Golden State or nobody for me. Line is at four and a half right now. Needed to tick down a little bit more unless San Antonio decides they're going to rest somebody. We'll see what the, if Pop starts going into that rest mode now at this time of the year or if they say there's limited minutes for Wemby, and we'll take that all into account. Yeah, Chris Paul played pretty good in that game as well. Nine assists, no turnovers, obviously getting the start without Curry. And the shoot, I mean, Kaminga played well. Clay played well. You had some bad shooting there from some of the other role players. You need to step up. Pajaminski and Moody, we'll see how they go today in the second game of that set. We'll see how that line goes. Raptors at Denver. Raptors coming off a tough loss at Portland. Lost that one in overtime. Quickly, these last couple of games has been phenomenal. This past one, 29 points, seven assists. Uh, they did have 20 turnovers in that game. Toronto just one in five. Their last six, not playing the best of ball right now. Meanwhile, Denver, absolutely red hot, playing phenomenal. Killed the Jazz the other night. Murray with the big game. Uh, they shot 66%, just ridiculous. They're now 8-1, and 7-2 and two against the spread since the All-Star break. Nuggets fire on all cylinders. They do get... Uh, The Heat next in Miami, obviously not as big of a finals look for a team who won the finals. They did just beat them a couple weeks ago, so maybe not much of a look there. But when you're 14 and a half paid favorites, maybe a little bit of a look when that's the first game of a road trip. Would be Raptors or nobody for me in this one, but they're a shorthanded team with Barrett questionable. You need him at least in this one. Yeah, um, 66%. Denver just put on a clinic uh, against the Utah Jazz. And that's a team that they historically struggle with. Uh, against the spread. Had no problem the other night. They've been dynamite since the All-Star break. Only thing here is this number too big. When you get those big numbers, 
You know it that they get that double digit lead. You're going to get Jokic on the bench, maybe for those extra couple of minutes, and maybe let them back in. Uh, I, I want no part of the Raptors, though, in this spot. Now, this number could even be higher. Remember, they're without Potal already. Uh, Barrett went down. Brown is out. Oh, but not that Barrett went down. He had an illness. He didn't play last game. He's another question mark. Um, Raptors season is over. They're outside of the play-in. Uh, looking in, they just lost at Portland. Mm-hmm. Ooh, just, just a t- it's 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 Toronto or nobody because of the number and because you can catch that back door. Just no interest in them. Uh, Denver looking like they're gearing up now for playoff time. A little sidetrack here, but breaking news: Garrett Cole, reigning AL Cy Young winner, going to be having an MRI on that elbow. Not good news. A couple of weeks before season wow. starts there for the Yankees. <laughs> See what goes on there. But just when things seem to be going right for the Yankees, they get a big, big one there. I mean, just put a put an L in their season right to start with. If you lose your ace, uh, that would be brutal, brutal, brutal. Um, hey, uh, Mets already lost Senga. I mean, obviously <laughs> yeah. not not Cole, but Senga was a, a huge, a huge piece for them. But th- this is what happened. This is why we talk about uh, futures, guys, so much. It, it, one injury like that just really could flip the script on mm-hmm. a team. So uh, try to stay away from that. Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing with baseball and the injury. I mean, really every sport. I mean, John and I were actually just talking about some of these NBA futures prices, and I think that's the only reason I could understand the Pelicans having 15 teams ahead of them in future prices is just because you're weighing in injuries with that team. I mean, that's the only thing that could justify it in my eyes. Well, they got no injuries now, so I don't know what they're what they're what they're actually weighing in is is they're not a public team. So the Lakers, the Knicks, teams that are not as good or even close to right now to the Pelicans are going to get more money than because they're up there. They're, they're, they're New York and LA. That's just the yeah. way it goes. But the, yeah, Pelicans, uh, as far as the future, that there is actually some value there. Not saying I expect them to even come out of the West. Uh, I've still got Clippers, OKC and Denver uh, rated ahead of them. But for the price, there's definitely not, there's definitely not 15 teams in the NBA better than the, the, the Pelicans, especially right now. If you guys know, We've been on, on the Pelicans two of the last three days. Uh, they're 30. This is the NBA for you guys. Uh, for If you're just a follow-up, not a uh, not a member, we had the uh, Pelicans on Friday. They jumped out. It was a 30-some-odd point lead. We luckily laid six. and Not luckily. I'm a fucking genius. We beat the line every day. We laid six and a half the day before that line went to eight, and we blew a 36-point lead. It was down to five, I believe, at one point. Um, but the game did land eight. So where guys are betting the closing line, this is what we talk about, 50-50, that, that, that's what you got. But we, we catch the W. And then they just blew out Atlanta, uh, start to finish pretty much. these. You could see the Pelicans getting it getting it going right now. We, me and Ben have been saying this from the beginning of the year. If healthy, if Zion could stay healthy, mm-hmm. CJ, who had, a couple, had some injury problems this year, Ingram, who's had some Ingram problems. But right now they're healthy. They can play with anybody. They can play with anybody. And the way the Western Conference is going to shape up, you know, you talk about three teams ahead of them, there's a good chance they won't have to face all three of those teams. I mean, the, some of those top teams there could get knocked out round all one. All about matchups. I'll tell mm-hmm. you one team don't want to see the Pelicans. That's the Clippers. They, yeah. they, they, they've had a real rough time with them. So when you get to, to playoff time, guys, one team might be better than the other. It's about matchups. Absolutely about matchups. Last matchup on this slate, we got Celtics at Portland, your best team in the NBA versus arguably one of your worst. And uh, this Blazers team is just extremely shorthanded, and they've been playing this way. Uh, They're coming off this last game, eight and huge game against the Raptors. Celtics, who are they going to play tonight? Porzingis and uh, uh, pretty much everyone's questionable. So you got to see who's going to be going in this one for Boston. They're going to be laying a number either way. Uh, this game can't really tell you much more beyond that. I mean, if 